The story of this poor widow in the gospel really helps to illustrate the gospel that we had last weekend. I don't know if you remember what it was, but it was the greatest commandments. To love God with our whole heart, mind, strength, soul, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. So if we start this passage and we look at love of neighbor, we can see Jesus rebuking the example of the scribes. Because they aren't showing forth very much love of neighbor. They give certain outside appearances that they are all about loving God, their whole selves. They wear certain clothes, they recite lengthy prayers, they ask for people to donate to the temple. They're doing these external things. But in reality, they're pretty much just living for themselves. They want the greetings, the places of honor. They're not really getting back to God or to his people, but they're just merely taking for themselves. Jesus says of them that they even devour the houses of widows by asking them to make certain pious contributions to the temple that they really can't afford. So these scribes show little love for their neighbor because their love for God is so small. But we can take this other example in the gospel of love for God. This is illustrated by the poor widow. She puts in two small coins, worth only a few cents, it says. Jesus explains that in doing this, she is more generous than anybody else. All those people who may have much, and they put in more, but they do so only because they feel like they can afford it doesn't really make any, any difference to their bank accounts. But for her, she gives everything that she has. This, this passage is often called the widow's might. I don't know if you've ever heard that before, the widow's might. Might is M-I-T-E. Um, and it's referring to the, the coins that she's placing in there. A might was the smallest... Amount, the lowest denomination of currency in, in Jewish money. The mite was only worth about six hours of work out of a daily wage. So really not all that much at all that she had. But this widow's mite, M-I-T-E, had great might, M-I-G-H-T, for her offering had great strength, represented her giving her whole self to God. All that she had. And so in the same way, giving herself to her neighbor. See, this passage isn't primarily about money. It's not about God wanting us to, to give to the point that puts us into poverty. Money isn't the, the primary thing that God wants which is illustrated by Jesus' rebuke of the, the scribes when they try to get too much out of those widows. But rather, what he wants is for us to love him with all of our hearts, with all of our soul, with all of our minds, with all of our strength, as we heard last weekend, to love God with all of our might. And last week, and we considered how we're able to do this. How can we love that completely? And it's because God himself loves us first. He fills us first with his love. The Lord is our strength. And with the Lord's strength, with the Lord's might, we're able to love that way in return. And so we, we see what happens when we do that, especially with the story of the other widow that we have today, the one in the first reading. First reading, we have a widow who also, just like the widow in the gospel, gives her whole self all that she has. Even though she has almost nothing, she shares the meager food that she has with Elijah, the prophet. And in doing so, when we give of ourselves in that way, it, it opens us up. It creates space for God to come in and work His power. That we see in that first reading that God then miraculously ensures that Elijah 
and the widow and her son for the entire year in which this drought occurs, they do not run short of food. So that's the amazing thing God can do when we open ourselves up. We attempt to give ourselves fully to God. He enables us to do things that we cannot on our own. And just as last week the answer came to us through the psalm that told us that the Lord is our strength, so too the psalm speaks to this truth about the overwhelming power, the overwhelming might that God has and what he can do when we're open to his working. So we hear today, the Lord keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. The fatherless and the widow he sustains.